Hello and welcome to The Wargamer and another Warhammer 40k painting tutorial. In this video I'll be showing you how you can paint the 4th generation Gene Sealer hybrid neophytes uh, using the Citadel range of paints to do so. So here we have the 4th generation Gene Sealer hybrid that I'll be painting as part of this tutorial. And as you can see I've split it down into several parts. I've got the, the body, the left arm and also the legs there. The, uh, the right arm and the actual arm. Uh, auto gun and finally the actual head are all separate to make painting a lot easier. It means I can get into all these nooks and crannies on the miniature. Now I've also primed it using the uniform grey spray primer available from the Army Painter because I really like using uh, grey primers. If you've seen my previous videos you'll know that I really like using them in my tutorials. Now the first task in painting this miniature is to tackle all the cloth that we've got on here. So you can see we've got some on the sleeves there, we've also got the trousers as well, uh, various areas dotted across the miniature. We're starting off with a base coat of Stegodon Scale Green, followed by a layer of Thunderhawk Blue before finally highlighting with Femrisian Grey. So we're starting off with the Stegodon Scale Green because the cloth areas are actually on the innermost sections of the miniature. It makes it a lot easier to paint these inner sections and then paint outwards because then you're not kind of over... Uh, trying to paint through the area. So for example around the uh, where we've got the holster here I can actually get my paintbrush right in there and if I do overspill it's not a problem because I can just paint the other areas later on. Now I've mixed in just a small amount of water in with the Stegodon Scale Green. It is a base paint which means the pigment levels are higher and it'll make it a lot easier to cover over the actual grey primer that we've got on here and it gives a really nice surface in which to build up from in later highlights. With the Stegodon Scale Green base coat completed, the next step is to perform a highlight using the Thunderhawk Blue. I'm just going to be picking out the folds of the cloth here with the Thunderhawk Blue, just picking out the lines here. Mix in a small amount of water as well, as this will help you to achieve some nice blending between the darker areas of Stegodon Scale Greens and the lighter areas of Thunderhawk Blue that we're painting on at the moment. Now the final step in painting the cloth is to perform a very slight highlight along these raised sections, as you can see here making a very small line of paint just along these folds. It really brings out these details in the cloth. We don't want to apply too much, we don't want to make the cloth too light or go too heavy with these highlights. So just mix in a small amount of water and this will help with the blending in much the same way as the previous step did as well. So we're going to be picking out all of these folds here and really enhance the details in the cloth. Then the next set of areas to paint is all the black areas on the miniatures. This includes the knee pads, the boots, the armor plating on the torso and also on the back there, these ridge sections. And we're painting all of these areas, first of all with the bad and black, followed by a Mechanica standard grey highlight before finally doing an extreme highlight of a Dawnstone. The aim of this step is to achieve a nice even coverage, so mixing in a small amount of water will help with this. As you can see here, I'm just making sure that I don't overspill onto the areas I've already painted, but I do want to apply it quite liberally across the rest of the miniature to get a really nice solid black base coat in which we can build up on with the future highlights. Now with the Mechanica Standard Grey we're now going to be highlighting in two stages. First of all for these padding areas we want to pick out all of these raised sections and also the trim around the outside as well. And We want to leave the bad and black visible in the recesses still. We only want to be picking out these raised sections. You can do this by just dragging the brush very lightly across the surface with just a small amount of paint on the brush and now I'll pick out the raised sections and leave the bad and black visible in the recesses. Now for the other areas such as the boots here we only want to actually pick out the edges so I'm using a brush again here, a thin brush for this is ideal. Again just to pick out these raised sections like so, drag the brush along the surface and then also drag it along these edges on the boot as well. The final step in painting these leather areas is to highlight them with Dawnstone. I'll be picking out the trim of these panels here, just uh, going along the edge with the Dawnstone like so, just to give it some differentiation between the ridges that we see in the centre. And then when we actually come to highlight any of the flat leather areas, such as the boots that we've got at the bottom here, instead of highlighting along all the edges, as you can see I've done here, I'm just going to be picking out some of these corners like so, just to perform an extreme highlight on these edges and this will just give the impression of shiny leather reflecting the light. Now the next step in painting our Gene Sealer Cultus is to tackle the skin areas and we're starting off with a base coat of Cadian Flesh Tone followed by a highlight of Kislev Flesh. We'll then be washing over the skin using Reichlin Flesh Shade before finally highlighting with Pallid Witch Flesh. Now using the Cadian Flesh Tone I'll be painting over the entirety of the skin areas, this includes the head and also the hands and the forearms. Now mix in a small amount of water here just to improve the flow, it should cover nicely over the grey but generally speaking it's better to get a even coverage from two thin coats than applying it straight out of the pot. 
With the Kadian Flesh Tone base coat completed, the next step is to highlight the edges here using the Kislev Flesh. I'm going to be picking out areas such as the brow here, across the forehead as well. Again, mixing just a small amount of water will make the blending between the darker and the lighter colors of skin a lot more subtle and not quite as harsh. And we just want to make sure we pick out all of these details, such as the nose, around the mouth, the chin, and the cheekbones as well. Following the Kiss Love Flesh highlight, the next step is to wash over the entirety of the skin with the Reichland Flesh Shade. We want to make sure this pools into all the recesses, such as the eyes around the forehead there, and really brings out the detail in the miniature. The next step in painting the skin is to enhance the bulging head of this fourth generation uh, hybrid that we've got here. So I've got some Pallid Witch Flesh, I've mixed in roughly equal quantities of uh, Lamia Medium into it, and I'm going to be applying it over the top of the head like so. And the reason why we've mixed in the Lamia Medium is we want it to blend really nicely, very, very subtle, and this will just really enhance the pallidness of the top of the head. And you can also pick out some of the features as well if you want to really enhance uh, the detail there. Now we've got a nice base coat for the skin, we want to enhance the alien uh, aspects of the GNC the Hybrid. Of this, we'll be applying a wash of Carabao Crimson over the rear of the head. Now we're going to be applying the Carabao Crimson over the rear of the head here, and I've mixed in some water, so I don't want to apply it too heavily, at least not at first. So we're going to kind of just capture the bottom of the cranium just here, and then also around the temples as well. I'm going to build this up over several layers, and this will give us a really nice alien-esque theme to the skin. With the skin areas completed, the next step is to start painting the armor that we've got around the torso and the neck there, and also on the shoulders. We're starting off with a base coat of Celestra Grey. Before washing over it, we're using Agrax Earthshade, and then we'll start to highlight it, first of all, using Administratum Grey, before finally applying some very extreme highlights of Ulthran Grey. Now, the Celestra Grey makes an excellent base coat because it is a base paint, which means it'll cover over nicely the grey primer that we've got here. Also, it's a very nice pale grey, which is perfect for the effect that we're going for. And it will work perfectly when we start to apply the washes and the highlights in the next steps. After applying the Celestial Grey, the next step is to wash over it with Agrax Earthshade. And I've mixed in some water here. So roughly one part water to one part Agrax Earthshade. And I'm washing it over the grey areas. And this will give us a nice dirty grey colour. It'll pull into the recesses, really bring out those definitions and details, such as just on the back control panel just here. And it'll also give it a slightly brown tinge as well represents dirt and grime that's kind of built up on the the industrial equipment that these guys are using for armor and equipment. So with the Administratum Grey we just want to pick out all of these edges as you can see here. I'm just going to be running the brush along them, especially around the shoulders and this trim that we've got here. Making sure we pick out all of these raised sections using the Administratum Grey. This will really enhance it. When applying the Ulthuan Grey, we want to bring out some of these uh, top edges and we want to kind of simulate light hitting these surfaces and getting reflected off. So the light's coming in from above like so and then it's reflecting off these edges. And we're going to be focusing mainly around here, forming a normal highlight as we did in the previous step. However, for everywhere else, we just want to apply some small dots around about the corners here and this will just really bring out the detailing in the armor. With the armor areas completed, the next step is to paint the leather areas. This includes the pouch and also the straps, and also a few of the other areas are along the back there as well. We're starting off with a base coat of Rhinox Hide, followed by a highlight of Doom Ball Round before performing an extreme highlight, finally using Squig Orange. For the base coat, we just want to apply a even coverage across the entirety of these leather areas. So I'm using the Rhinox Hide for this stage, just mixing a small amount of water as well, just to improve the flow and just make it a lot easier to paint over the grey base coat. And be very careful when painting these straps, especially some of these ones at the back here, as they can be quite difficult to paint without overspilling. So just use a small brush with just a small amount of paint on the tip there, and that should make painting these areas much easier. With the base coat achieved, the next step is to highlight the edges using the Doom Ball Brown. I've just got a small amount on my brush here, and I'm going to be running the brush perpendicular to the edge, and this will just create a nice thin edge highlight, as you can just about see getting applied here. I'll be doing this across all of the edges of the leather areas we painted in the previous step. The final step is to really bring out the corners of the leather areas and for this we'll be using the uh, squig orange just uh, applying a very small dot onto these areas. It'll give us this faded look as if the leather has been worn along these corners and edges through use. Just a small dot in each of these corners. Uh, just use a small brush as before and just drag the brush perpendicular to the surface. 
The next step in painting this miniature is to tackle all of the red areas. This includes the uh, the wrist wraps on this particular miniature and also the pipes there. But on some of the other hybrids, you'll also see uh, cloth and uh, robes, which you can use the same techniques for. We're we'll starting off with a base coat of Mephiston Red, followed by a wash of Karaberg Crimson, before finally highlighting, first of all, with Wild Rider Red, and finally, Fire Dragon Bright. I've mixed in just a small amount of water into the mix here, just so I can apply it over the grey base coat more easily. It's a very bright colour, as you can see here, and this gives a really nice base coat on which to work up from. Now just be very careful when applying this not to overspill onto the areas that we've already painted, and use a thin brush when necessary. Following the base coat, we'll now be applying the wash over the red areas, and this will pull into the recesses and really bring out any detail in them. You can just about to see as I'm applying it over here. I'm just being careful not to overspill onto the skin areas. We want to tinge the skin with the red tone. We just want to keep it isolated to the red cloth. With the wash dry, we now want to highlight over these edges using the Wild Rider Red, and this gives us a nice orangey tinge. You can just about to see as I'm dragging it across the surface there. I'm just having my brush perpendicular to the surface, just at a slight angle, and a small amount of paint on, on the tip there. And this just creates a really nice, fine highlight. The final step for painting the red areas, whilst not necessarily needed for these small areas, such as around the, the wrist here, we just want to use some Fire Dragon Bright just to add some small dots, particularly where you've got areas that are particularly raised, or if you've got corners where two folds are joining, or if you've got areas where the cloth is ripped and damaged, you can really extenuate these details by applying small dots of the Wild Rider Red just on the surface. With the red areas of the miniature completed, the next step is to start painting the metal areas, such as the weapon here, and also some areas that we've got on the main miniature itself, including the chain and a few of the additional items across the armor. We're we'll starting off with a base coat of lead belcher, followed by a wash of non oil, before finally highlighting using iron breaker. So for this step, we just want to apply the lead belcher over the metal areas to perform a base layer. As you can see here, I'm just painting this chain just on coming from the belt being very careful not to overspill onto the areas we've already painted. And when you paint other areas on the miniature, such as the actual weapon stock itself, you can be afford to be a little bit more liberal with your application. Following the lead belcher base coat, the next step is to wash over all of these chains and metal areas that we painted in the previous section with the non-oil, and just making sure that it pulls into all of these recesses and really brings out the detail and darkens the overall metal color. The final step in painting the metallic areas is to highlight them using Iron Breaker, and I'm just going to be picking out these raised sections here, really bring out the detail, especially on the chain here, just picking out these links individually like so, leaving the darker areas visible in the recesses, it's really enhance the shading there. Now if you wanted to, you could apply some further highlights by using Stormhost Silver, and this would work really well on the weapon for example, where you could uh, simulate scratches in the metal surface. The next step in painting our Gene Stealer Hybrid is to paint any of the gold areas, including this uh, pendant we've got on the chain there. And we're starting off with a base coat of Retributor Armor before washing over it using Reichland Flesh Shade, and then finally highlighting with Stormhost Silver. Using the Retributor Armor, we just want to achieve a nice base coat over these gold areas. As you can see here, this covers really nicely over the grey base coat. It's a base paint, which means it won't have to apply too many layers, but I would recommend applying two thin down layers to get the best coverage possible. Now by applying the Reichland Flesh Shade over the gold we painted in the last step, we get this really nice warm shading to it. It pulls into the recesses, really brings out some of the details as well. And this will re-enhance the highlight that we'll be applying in the next. The final step in painting the gold areas is to highlight the edges with your Stormhose Silver and just lightly drag the brush along these edges like so. And this will simulate the light reflecting off the gold surface and creating a much lighter edge colour there. Now the final step in painting our Gene Sealer Hybrid is to pick out some of the yellow areas. This includes the lamp that we've got on the shoulder there, and also, if I just bring in the weapon here, we'll also have uh, be painting a small stripe just going down the front of the weapon there, just as a small uh, decal. We'll be starting off with a base coat of Avalon Sunset, followed by a wash of a Seraphim Sepia before highlighting with Dawn Yellow. So the first step is to paint the Avalon Sunset Stripe. Now I've mixed in some water here, so we don't want to have a completely solid line. We want to make it appear as though the paint has been flaked off. So I'm just going to be starting here roughly just by the trigger guard there and drawing the brush diagonally away from it. Just create a yellow line like so, going along the top of the miniature as well. And once we've got a light line, you can just about see there, we've got quite a light color at the moment. I'll be leaving this to dry and then applying a second layer, but I'll be applying it in patches, so a small patch at the bottom, small patch on the top, and that will really give us the simulation of paint that's worn off 
the weapon. After applying the Avalon Sunset base coat into the lamp, he'll be applying the Seraphim CPO wash over the top, and this will just pull into the recesses and really bring out the ridges that we've got in the center here. It'll kind of darken around the edges as well and create a simulation of a light emanating from the torch. The final step in painting the lens is to just pick out some of the ridges that we've got on here using the Dawn Yellow very carefully. We're aiming just for the center here at this point. We don't want to apply too strong a highlight. And then also, if you're feeling brave, you can also apply a small amount just towards the top of this inside section as well. And here we have the completed fourth generation Neophyte Hybrid. Now whilst I focused on the fourth generation miniature in this tutorial, you could apply the exact same colours and techniques to most of the areas for the other generations as well, notably the armour and cloth colours and also some of the metal work as well. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please do let me know in the comments below and also with your suggestions of what you would like me to tackle in future tutorials. To be kept up to date with all the videos and projects that I'm currently working on, be sure to hit that subscribe button and also follow me on Facebook and Instagram, which you can find links to in the description below. And finally, if you would like to support me in making more tutorials, you can do so by checking out my Patreon page, which you can find a link to on the screen now or in the description below. Over 10 hours of filming and editing go into making these tutorials, and your support will really help me make more tutorials in the future. So until next time, thanks for watching, and goodbye.